It is good to be here this morning. It is really good to see all of your faces. And I am just so thankful for this body and for these people that gather every week. Um, I'm so thankful for your faith and for the journey that you've been on and that you've clung to this group of people around you and come into this house week after week. We truly are blessed to know each other, aren't we? It's amazing. Well, before we start, do you mind if I just get into prayer and invite the Father? Oh, God, how we love you. Oh, how we worship you here. There really is no one else like you. No one compares to you. There's not a candle that could be lit next to the light that you bring, Father. You are everything to us. And God, we've come here today to worship you. Not to play games. Not to be religious. God, we came to have a relationship with the creator of the universe. The God who made the mountains and the seas. The God who calls us by name and draws us close and into a relationship. Father, we've come to know you. We've come to seek your face and to know your word deeper and to have it implanted in our hearts. To be changed by you, to be different because we have you in our hearts. Father, from glory to glory, you take us from one chapter to another in the seasons of our lives. And we are so thankful that we are never alone. Oh God, we've come to know you that great and almighty God. Father, as I speak this morning, may it be your words, the things and the lessons that you've taught me in my life, I pray that they would have value to here today. And Lord, that they would be a gift to the people who hear and that it would be a deposit on the inside of their faith and their life. Lord, I'm humbled to be used by you. I thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, I'm here to talk about The power of worship. As you know, I've been a worship leader for a long time. I'm not sure if you can see anything on the screen yet, but it'll come. If not, it'll prompt me. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my journey as a lot of you now don't know me, which is so interesting. (laughs) Um, But my husband and I have actually been at this church for 11 years with our family and pastored here as the senior pastors for five years before we uh, transferred the pastoring over to Justin and Tamara, and what a blessing they've been. What an incredible season this church is in, and how grateful we are that we've been a, a part of it, even just a small part. And one of the things that I have done my whole life is lead worship. Since I was probably 13, I think it was the first time that I remember leading worship in a church, and I remember just, I was so excited to be a part of the choir. We had a really big church at that time, and there was a lot of us, and um, there was opera singers and the deep bass singers, and there was all kinds of singers, and I was just a 13-year-old, just excited to be able to be used and to be able to have a part. To be honest, at that time, my experience was just entertainment. I really didn't know the worship end of of singing, Um, and singing is not the only part of worship, by the way. There's lots of ways and expressions that there are in worship, but this is the part that I want to talk about today. And so as a younger uh, 13-year-old, I began to sing in this choir, and I began to be noticed by um, the pastor's wife, who was this vocal instructor. And so she uh, asked me to come and and do a a few plays and sing some things on um, some musicals. And I just thought I just made it, you know, like I just I just made it. I was going to I was going to just really shock the world with this voice that I had been given. (laughs) And I remember the transfer between knowing that I could sing and knowing what it was made for. And I remember sitting in the congregation much like this, and I remember watching people at the front of the stage and they were just worshiping with all their heart, like this expression of just abandonment. And then I looked up and I saw the worship team who were singing the set list. And the Lord began to say to me, Worship is not a set list. It is not a list of songs. It is actually not even one song. Worship is not the ability to sing. Worship is not the ability to play an instrument. Worship is the ability to bring me into the picture and lay everything you have at my feet. And I went, oh, well, that's not what we do at church. I'm sorry, but at that time, I didn't, I didn't, I was still learning. My church norms were we had a few elements of worship. We came in the house, we had praise and worship. Then we had offering. Then we had announcements. 
Then we had a message, and maybe we had a call at the end of the message, and then we left. And very few times was I fully impacted by what was happening in the building. I was impacted, but it wasn't always personal. And what the Lord was saying to me was, worship is personal. It doesn't always just happen here. This can be the beginning of your story, and it's many people's beginning. But it's only a sliver to what the Lord wanted worship to be. And I began to learn that it wasn't about church norms. It wasn't about church norms at all. In fact, there's a whole lot of reasons why we come here to gather. And it's really not to hear your neighbor sing. It's not to be in the choir. It's actually not to have a um, focus on really singing at all. Isn't that weird? It's just a tool. Music is a beautiful tool. But it's just a tool. And if it's not, if it becomes more than that, it becomes the worship. People want to get on the team because they want to be a part of something great. But really, we're all a part of something great, which is worship. And so I began to see that we do worship Jesus in this house because of his divinity. Because he's God. I'm not. My voice is not. My skill is not. He is. So as I bring those things to him, I lay it before him. I use it for him. Because of his supremacy, because of his humanity, he came to the earth for me. No one else did that. Laid down his life for me because of his humility. I worship him because he is all those things and I bow before him with whatever I have, with whatever he gave me. Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, for his gift and call. He gave you the gifts you carry, whether it be art or music or whatever you do in life. So really, what do I have but to give it back to him? So we come into his presence, wherever that might be, in your closet, at home, in your car, as you drive, at work, wherever you might be. And worship can be given at all those places. In fact, it should be given there the most and here the least. This is only one of seven days we get six days to be at his feet, six days to bring our offering before him, six days to worship him. If we only come here on the one to worship, oh, we're giving such a small amount and it's now becoming the everything instead of the overflow. The overflow, out of the overflow, I worship at his feet, not because I'm here in a religious ceremony doing something that I should do once a week or I feel like I'm a real loser, maybe not a Christian at all. If this is the only attachment we have to our Christianity, it's so small and frail and easily convinced us away and easily snatched up into something else. You see, worship comes from diving into his word and finding out who we are in that place. Worship comes from the overflow of knowing who he is. And actually, you can't get to know Christ unless you spent time in his word. You just can't. You just can't. It's all the things, it's all the letters, it's all the knowledge, it's all the wisdom poured out to us in this book. And if we don't find ourselves in this book, we won't find ourselves in worship. Because worship is an overflowing, knowing who he is and standing in confidence before him in his throne. Does this making sense? Yes, very good. I don't think the clicker's working. I got a good finger, I can do it. So what is worship? I already said it, worship is personal. How many of you read the Psalms? Have you read the Psalms? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's read the Psalms. <laughs> My question for you is how much of that is surfacey conversation? How much of it is like, well, it's so nice outside. Thank you for the weather. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not. It's vulnerable and raw. God, I hate this day. I don't know who I am today. I'm feeling raw in my heart and I'm feeling down. Your enemies are on every side. They're crowding over me. God, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. Isn't that how he goes? He empties out. He's not afraid to say the stuff that's hard. And I think in a church setting, sometimes we want victory, 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 victory. It's beautiful to have victory, but a majority of our lives are, are in transition towards victory. Yeah. 
If we only wait for victory to start to worship, we will never worship. It comes in the trial and in the struggle and in the in-betweens and in your teens and in your 20s and in your 30s and in your 40s and in your 50s and in your 60s. And the more I go down those lines, the more I realize that you don't know who you are in your teens. So you got to run to the Lord and worship. You don't know who you are in your 20s. Anyone say amen. We really don't know. And in our 30s, we're just beginning to figure out some things. And in our 40s, we're starting to not care as much. And in our 50s, we're finally enjoying some things. And in our 60s, we're wondering what we did all those years. And in our 70s, we're wondering how much longer we have. Is that not true? And so if we do not worship in all of these moments in between, when will we worship? You will not worship just when you arrive. You will worship till you arrive and when you arrive and past arriving and on to the next gate and continuing on and on and on. And what happens when we worship? We begin to bow. We begin to bow. Oh God, you are great. This is kind of how I come in when I come to worship. It feels like I'm on the outside of, and I'm, I'm, I'm out in nature in my mind. I, I do a lot of imagining. So I imagine I'm outside and I'm looking around and I'm seeing the mountains and the sky and I'm going, who created all of this beauty? God, it could only be you. Everything else seems so ridiculous, but you, Father, are so good. And I begin by making him the biggest and the broadest and the most mighty and the most majestic. And what happens to me? Have you ever looked down in a plane and you've seen something, a car or something, and you thought, how small? It looks so big when you're in it, but how small? That's what I feel like when I come before the biggest God and I see what he's done, and I'm only in part of the universe that he's created. There's measures beyond what we can see. I feel so small but not unworthy because it calls me then into worthiness because he saw me. He knew me. He loves me. He's passionate about me. When I read his word, it says he sings over me. Oh, how precious I am to an almighty God. And it brings me further to my knees and it begins coming out of my insides. Oh, Father, there's no one like you. And it redeems me and it shows me my identity. I am not worthless. I am not scum. I am valuable, precious in his sight. And everything else that comes in contrary to that seems so ridiculous. The enemy comes sometimes when you're in worship. Ever had that? Where he says, remember what you did yesterday? Remember how you yelled at your kids? Remember how you forgot to do such and such? Remember how you're losing it at work lately? The enemy likes to try to come in. And if we don't know his word, we won't know what to say to him. His word is what guides us. Thy word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Amen. 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 And so worship is a conversation. It's an interaction with the Lord. It's an intercession. All of a sudden I'm interceding for my future and I'm telling the devil where I'm going. And he's going, no, you're not. And I'm saying, yes, I am. And I'm standing at my full height and I'm seeing what the Lord has in store for me. He said, it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. I'm on your side. I'm right here beside you. Can you imagine just like we heard this morning about sitting in a prison cell and you're shackled, not just shackled, but beaten, beaten, beaten hard. I mean, I don't think that those guys would have felt that great. And yet in that time, in the middle of the dungeon, In the middle of the worst, darkest, dankest part, the dungeon, the place where people go to die, these two men begin to worship. And they're not worship because they have an agenda. They're not worshiping because, well, maybe God will free us. They're worshiping because he's king, because he's Lord, and they've submitted their whole lives to him. What happens in that place? Things begin to shake. Things begin to rumble. Old things start coming off, shackles start to break. And these two men are led out of there triumphant. Did they know they were coming out triumphant? Did they have any idea that that's what the Lord had in store? But the atmosphere they created opened an opportunity for God to do something great. I want to ask you here this morning, how many of you feel stuck? Maybe in the dankest part of your life where you maybe, maybe not, 
but maybe it's dark in the place that you're on in your, in your head and in your heart. What are you going to do in that space? Don't you have the same opportunity and the same invitation? Don't we? That's why on a Sunday morning when you come in here and you feel like crap, you don't just stand and observe the worship. You don't ask yourself, do I feel like this today? Do I feel like going to church today? Do I feel like getting in my car? Do, I feel, do you feel like getting up in the morning and starting your car on a cold and blizzardy day? Do you? How many of you still do it? Every single one of you who goes to work. Why? Because it's going to get you somewhere. Where are we going to go? And what are we going to do with the opportunity in front of us? We have the opportunity to worship. Worship is letting go and grabbing on to God. With all your heart and soul and mind, worship is grabbing on and not letting go and telling your heart to get in line with his word. We are not led by feelings, friends. I know we have them and they're precious and important submitted. But if they lead us in every direction, we're going to be over here and then over here and then over here. And oh, what about that? I feel like I'm in a mall when I think about my emotions. I like that shirt. No, I like that shirt. Oh, I like those pants. Anyone ever gone shopping with me knows exactly what this means. <laughs> this is the thing though. We're not in a mall. We're in the body of Christ. And we have a responsibility to lead our hearts, don't we? We have a responsibility because worship is a battlefield. And you may not know how hard you're going to have to fight. You know, may not know how long, but you need to get into it and put on the full armor of God and see where the Lord takes you. I was reading a book this last couple of days, and it's called uh, Powerful Worship and Praise by Terry Law. And he says this. Now, he had just gone through his wife uh, passing away very suddenly. She was in a car accident. He was across the world working as a missionary. He gets a phone call. He has little children, little kids. His youngest is four. He gets a call, and it's an urgent call that his wife has actually crashed uh, on their car on the way to pick up their kids from school. What a terrible call. What an absolutely terrible call. And he goes through a time of deep mourning and deep, 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 deep sadness. And he has a friend who reaches out to him a couple weeks after and says, Terry, you have to get your heart into worship. And Terry said, I don't want to. I'm done with ministry. I'm done. I'm done being a missionary. I'm finished. I can't do this. And he said, Terry, you have to get your heart planted in the word of God and let the word of God come out of your heart. The Lord is not finished with you. And he goes on and he talks about how worship is the battlefield and it's the place that he switched from mourning to joy, where he was able to lay the ashes of mourning off and put on a cloak, a garment of righteousness, a place of joy. And he says this, you and I are called to march right into the middle of the battlefield and then turn away from the enemy. We are called to sing, to celebrate God while the enemy falls before us. How many of us aren't trying to worship while we keep that thing center? Oh God, I worship you because I need you to pay my bills. God, I worship you because I need healing in my body. God, I worship you because I'm so lonely and I need a friend, could you bring me someone else? Yes, those are okay. But it's amazing when you go, God, I worship you because you're King of kings and Lord of lords. You're everything I need, Jesus. You're the healer of my soul. You're my comforter, my counselor. You know what I need, Lord. You know what I need, God. You're my provider. You're my King of kings and Lord of lords. You're El Shaddai, you're more than enough, you're more than enough. See, it's not passive. It's not passive. It's not observing. It's stepping in. It's stepping in. It's stepping in. I turn away from the things and let go of the things and leave them in the Lord, with the Lord, and come with my heart before him. That's worship. What does worship do? 
What does worship do? I'm going to just ask you, just maybe as a crowd, to just shout out something that you feel. This is what I said. I said that worship brings awe, that it reveals my smallness and my need for him, that it reminds me that I'm loved, that it breaks off ties of unworthiness, that it brings revelation and alignment with the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do, that it declares war in the spirit. Is there anything else? Is there anything else that comes up to you? Does it bring you peace? Does it bring you understanding? What else does it do for you? Someone shout something out. Forgiveness. Brings truth. Yes, it gives forgiveness. Brings forgiveness. Reminds us that we're forgiven. Anyone else? Joy. Yes, so much joy. Sometimes I want to dance in here and you're all so conservative. <laughs> Some of you are like, come on. Let's go. Yes, are you ready? Are you getting ready for those days, guys? We're going to break off those heavy chains, lift up our hands and just have a Holy Spirit boogie in the place. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. Anything else? What else does worship do for you? Love. Yes, love happens. And actually just not love from God, but love for each other. Yeah, right. Oh my goodness. Have you ever had when you're kind of ticked and you come into church and you start worshiping and actually when you leave, you love that person and you're not ticked anymore? <laughs> yes, that's what happens. It is so amazing. In fact, you can't even remember why you were mad and it seems so small. It seems so small because it bowed its knee to the Almighty. Amen. Because the King, the Prince of Peace, and the love comes into this place. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Freedom. Freedom, Freedom reigns in this place. Yes. Sometimes I just want to be like, man, we're so confined, and I just love the freedom that he brings. Anyone else? Gratefulness. Gratefulness. Yes. In fact, the word talks over and over again about how, how singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs led the people to a place of gratefulness and remembrance of what he did. Yeah, it reminded them. It built faith. I think gratefulness is like the hugest attachment to faith because as you're grateful, your heart's like, wow, he could do that again. He could do bigger than that. In fact, he could do so much more. Look at the universe again. Look at how big this is. I can't even fathom what he could do because I don't understand how I work, never mind how the universe works and how we're all planned and put together. How in the world am I going to think of what a God that great could do in my life? Yes. Well, I bow my knee and say, have at her. <laughs> Just do what you can do and only you can do. Anyone else? Grace. Yes, courage. 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 Man, we need a whole bunch of courage. We need to become a culture of courage. We need to stay in his presence. What was the other one? Peace. Peace. Yeah. When peace like a river. Right, Dad? With peace like a river. Anyone else? Fresh perspective. Yeah, fresh perspective. Why is that? Why do you think we get a fresh perspective when we come into worship and we spend time with the Lord? Yeah, I think our vision, it, it's like because we sing, if we're singing the right songs or if we're worshiping in the right way, whether that be you spending time in the word or you singing or however your expression is of worship, if we're doing it, what we're doing is we're putting the word first. Yeah. Our thoughts and feelings and all the things second, Right? So we're putting the word first. Well, we have a lot of need for this in our heart. Putting the word first just is changing everything. And it declares war in the spirit. I love this verse. First Peter 2, 9 says, God chose you to be his people. Fresh perspective. You are his royal priests. Fresh perspective. We are a holy nation. You are God's special treasure. You are all these things so that you can What? Give him praise. Give him praise. Ever praised a hockey team? Ever praised a singer? Ever praised a talent? Ever praised something else? And, and it should be small in comparison to us giving him praise. We are a wild and radical bunch of people. And we need to let that wild and radical expression of joy out sometimes. Amen? God brought you out of what? darkness into his wonderful light. When do we worship? Psalm 71, 8 says, my mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor, not slender. That's a nice word. All day long. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Habakkuk 3, 17. 
Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop falls and the fields produce no fruit, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in my God, my Savior. When I have no job, when I have no food, when I have no friends, when I have no place to go, when I have nothing and I don't know where I'm going next, then what do I do? Oh man, I find myself at the feet of Jesus and I just tell him he is awesome and he is worthy and I know he's working on my behalf and I am not stuck and I'm not sitting here forever and I'm not lost and I'm not unworthy and I'm not just a, a, someone to be forgotten. But no, I am a priest, a royal, I am a royal and holy nation. Amen? Amen. What happens on the inside of us? Oh my goodness. Psalm 34, one says, I will bless the Lord at? At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalms 84, 1 to 2, 4 to 5, and 10 to 11 says, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Just as the sparrow searches for a home and the swallow builds a nest for herself, where she may, find, where she may place her young, so do I seek your altars, O Lord, my of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They offer continuous praise to you. Pause and think about that. O oh Lord God, upon your shield, behold the face of your anointed one. It is better to spend one day in your courts, right, Ariana, than thousands elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper, a humble man in God's house than dwell outside the tents, and the inside, dwell inside the tents of the wicked. Friends, I think we're missing some worship sometimes. I'm going to speak for myself. I've had some pretty dark days. I remember one day that was really, really dark, and I couldn't really, I didn't feel like um, I could do much. I felt a little depressed, to be honest, on the brink of, oh, no, I don't know if I'm going to come out of this. And I remember a friend calling me and saying, you don't sound like yourself. I'm going to come over. And she came over and she brought her guitar. And I think I felt more like a mute <laughs> stranger to her than I felt like a friend. I just didn't have the energy to express what I, I just didn't have the energy. I was depleted. I probably overworked myself, stressed myself out, got concerned in things I shouldn't have. And I didn't have anything left. And she came over and she recognized this is a good friend. She recognized that I needed Jesus. I needed Jesus. And she brought her guitar and she said to me, don't move. I think I was just in my joggers on my couch. Don't move. And she began to play her guitar and just began to worship the Lord and began to pour out her heart, not with me because I wasn't participating, but over me. And she began to declare, you are free. You're coming out of this. You're not staying here. This isn't the end. And I could barely thank her because I was, I didn't jump up with anything inside yet, but something broke that day. Something in the spirit broke that day. And I began to step in just a little more to the Lord, just a little more each day, whatever I could do, just a little more. And the Lord was so patient and kind. And it may have started off not sounding so great, but at the end, I was at war and I knew it and I was coming out. And I came out and I'm out. And we all have a decision to make, like I said earlier, what are you gonna do in your dank dark place? What are you gonna do there? Are we just gonna get overrun and overwhelmed and overworked and overtired? Or are we gonna stop and ask the Lord and invite him into that place? Can we church, be the church? Can we grow? Can we encourage each other with grace? Can we step in alongside someone who's having a really bad dark day and not judge and come alongside of them and be love? Can we sing over them and declare over them who God has created them to be? Can we? Can we pull them up or sit next to them, whatever they have the energy for, and remind them of who God's called them to be? Can we do it for ourselves? Can we? I want to invite you to stand.
This is my end point. Things shift when we worship. Things shift. Anyone have anything that needs to shift? Do you have a, do you have a nut where you need a screw or do you have a, something that needs to be moved out of a place so something can work properly? Anybody? Do you have a, men, do you have a mental block somewhere where you just, you don't have the creativity or the energy or the faith? Do you? Because I do. And, and folks, I'm hopeless without the presence of the Lord. I'm a basket case. I really am. I'm depleted. I'm nothing. I have nothing to give you, anything at all. But what I do have with the Lord is hope and peace and joy. And the Lord said to me one day, he said, your voice means nothing when people walk out those doors. If they remember your talent, it'll do nothing for them. But if they know my name and if they know my presence, and if they know what I have to offer them, they will leave and go back to their dank, dark place and bring me there and I will get them out. Amen. Because you are just a tool that my presence can live in. So Father, come on friends, we're not gonna leave here without some worship. And I'm gonna ask you wherever you need to be is wherever you need to be. So if you're here like me and you're like, I just wanna get outside and look at you, who you are. Father, who are you? Okay, I see the mountains and the clouds and the sky. Okay, you are the creator. Start there. You're there. You start there. You're the creator. If I go a little deeper, Father, I see that even though it's so big, you still see me, that I'm precious to you. Start there if that's where you're at. If you need to go a little deeper and say, okay, God, you see me and you see that I'm precious. Now you call me righteous. Oh, God, you don't just see me, but you call me loved, beloved. Oh, God, I worship you. And Father, when I come so close to you, I see you face to face. And now you're everything I could ever want and need in my life. Father, you are so good. You are so faithful. You are so kind. We're going to do some worship and we're going to do it wherever we want. But I want to give you one illustration while you're still standing. So look on up. This is a card that was given to me, um, actually, by my parents. And I really love this card. My mom and dad write nice things sometimes in the cards. And, but these cards usually come pretty, you know, generic, right? This is kind of like our songs on Sunday morning. They come pretty generic. They're nice. They're beautiful. And they have great words. And we sign our name at the bottom saying, from me to Jesus. Okay? That's nice. I really like that. I like getting those. But you know what I like even more? These are some cards I got from my kids when they were little. And these kids took time, there's this one says, there's no words to explain. And it goes on and talks about, this is from my little girl, Jose. And she talks all about how beautiful I am, how much she's learning from me. She talks about how, you know, when she grows up, she wants to be like me. I, she may have changed her mind, I don't know. <laughs> she's grown up now. Um, but this is a beautiful card from my little girl. She probably wrote it when she was about eight. Here's another one, this is from Gabrielle. Gabrielle was always so good. She's crafty. And these cards talk about who I am to them. Now, how many of you like receiving these cards? I really like receiving these cards. This is precious and, and good. How many of you really like receiving these? When we come to the Lord on Sunday mornings, let's not get weird, okay? We're going to sing the songs on the Sunday morning because those are precious. But God's inviting us to have deeper words of expression too, and he's asking us to fill in the blanks. So we might be singing, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Signed from me, okay? And then there's a spot where the instruments are just playing. In fact, Jody, I'm going to have you come on up. There's a spot where the instruments are just playing. And what do you do with that? Oh, he's got nice shoes today. I really like her hair. That's cool. I wonder if that's real. Um, you know, I'm kind of curious. What are we doing after? Who wants to go for lunch? Lunch, anybody? You know, our minds can go there, right? But worship is not passive. Worship is a step deeper. And when you have those moments of just playing, what is it? What is it that's in here? What is it that needs to come out? We just said, how great is our God? 
And maybe we fill it in with, you rescued me. <laughs> you took me out of that place, God. You brought me somewhere else, Jesus. <laughs> yes, you need a doubt, that's okay. <laughs> All right, but how I needed you there. You are my wisdom, Jesus. You're great, great God. And you bring me out of the pit and you bring me out of the already big mess I'm in. You help me see you, you help me see me, you help me know I'm loved, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I want to be like you. I want to be known by you, Jesus. I'm captivated by you. You're my strength. You're my shield. You're my everything, Lord. Come on, church. This is what I mean. What would it look like? What would it sound like? What's the words in your heart this morning? You don't have to sing them, you can say them. You can just think them. But come on, dig in, dig in, dig in. Yes, you are, you are, you are. <laughs> yes, you are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. For some of you, it's teach me how to worship you, God. Teach me how to press into you, Lord. Show me how to trust you, Father. Show me how to trust you, Father. Yes, yes, God. You don't know so did it, I don't know did it, so don't know. You're my faithful God. You're my faithful God. There's no one like you, no one like you. You fill my loneliest days with peace. You fill my loneliest days with peace, Lord. You are my strength, you are my joy, you are my everything. You are my everything. Cause how great is that? Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our worship sang this uh, team sang this song this morning and it kind of just captured everything that I was preaching about like everything um, I really want to go here you know I really want to go to a place of abandon and I really want to do that with my friends and I want to intercede for you in this place and I want you to intercede for me that's what happens in this space and oh, I just trust that the Lord is gonna lead us deeper, church. We haven't even seen where he wants to take us yet. We are just on the cusp. Our church is gonna write songs. Our church is gonna prophesy. Our church is going to rise up. Our church is gonna be leaders. Our church is gonna be leaders in this city as we worship. And that's the, that's the door to come into his presence with the place of awe. So can we sing this song as we part today? And, can we go here? Is it okay? Can we go deeper? Church, can we go deeper? And if you're having a tr trouble, you know, one of the things that I was praying about this message is I said, Lord, some of us don't worship this way and I don't want it to not land for some or feel like shame for some who don't connect this way. And I felt the Lord say, this is actually a, a, a good way to say, hey, if you feel that way, it's because there's a disconnect of who you think God is. It's because there's a barrier 
There's, um, when we sing about him being a father and you didn't have one, how do you sing about that? Or when you sing about, you know, triumph and all you feel is that you've been at war for your whole life, how do you think and feel about that? It feels like something's being withheld from you. And I just feel like the Lord wants to heal your perspective and he wants you to see who he really is and he wants to deposit in the inside of you. Let him show you. And maybe even during worship, when there's words that we're singing that you can't say or that you can't connect to, ask the Lord in that place. Let that be your place of your own song. Father, who are you? What is a father? Show me, show me, show me, show me. God, I want nothing between you and me, so show me. Yeah, let's sing it out. Thank you, Father God. Oh, Jesus, take us deeper. Precious to 
the Savior. I'm not forgotten, Lord. You see every part of me and you heal every part of me. My healer, my Jehovah, my Prince of Peace. Ooh. You're everything I need, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want, to, I want to encourage you. Words spoke the world into being, not thoughts. So as precious as your thoughts are to the Lord, and he knows them from afar, says 139 of Psalms, words are powerful. They shift and break things off of you. Some of you are so shy, so shy. You need practice. Go into a field and just worship the Lord where no one's around. And then get in your car and turn on the music and worship. Oh guys, words change things. Words are what we declare sovereignty when we're declaring our sovereignty to something, we speak to it. If you wanna become a citizen in Canada, you speak to it. You say it, I declare. I just wanna encourage you, my friends. Oh, worship is words. Let them come out. If you have a river living on the inside of you, let it come out. You might have lived in embarrassment and fear and maybe it just feels like you don't want anyone else to hear. Well, go crawl under a chair, I don't care. But let them come out. Let's not be stuck, okay? We are talking about the King, the King, the King the king so think in your mind one word one thing about Jesus that you love and that you appreciate just let it live here live it live here I want to encourage you now let it out Jesus you are my you are my prince of peace think of another thing Jesus you are my you are my counselor you are my father think of another one okay now let it out Jesus you are my you are my yes practice this when you go practice this when you come practice this before you fall asleep Jesus you are my Prince of Peace you watch over me as I sleep I exalt you I exalt you I exalt you I exalt you I worship you I magnify you you are all in all father you never leave me alone you'll never stop pursuing you'll never stop pursuing you're like a river of living water father your word comes out of me it renews my very being Father, I am who you've created me to be, and you are majesty, you are Jehovah, you are all, you're all God that people talk about and more. You surprise me every day. God, you surprise me with your goodness. You surprise me with your joy. God, you bring rivers of, of creativity to my mind as I go to work and as I solve problems. Father, you, God, you make everything accessible to me. Father, you are so faithful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You lead my steps, you guide my paths. Father, you are amazing. Oh, come on church, you could just go on and on. We could be here all day and all night just talking about one sliver of who the Lord is. Oh, and I just wanna encourage you, this is for every single day. This is your constant communication and your connection. You don't have to be stuck in grief or sadness or depression or anxiety. In fact, if you look at all the studies, worship is a major component to coming out of those places. Scientists agree. People of faith have less depression and anxiety than those who don't. That's what science says, but we cannot be passive or we will become just like the world. Amen. Oh, Father, we give this day to you. All right, come on, come on. I'm not gonna pray by myself. Every one of us, we give this day to you, Father. We give this, this life to you. I am yours, Lord. Teach me to be a worshiper. Teach me to fall in love with you. Teach me, Lord God, may I never live a day without you. Father God, if I walk too close to the edge and I'm over here, would you guide me back quickly? Shepherd, shepherd me, Lord. I am yours. I am yours. And Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. We pour our hearts out to you. Father, I don't want to live a day without you. We thank you, Lord God. And everyone said, amen, 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 amen. amen. 
You want me to dismiss? All right. All right, next week, we're going to come into the house and we're going to worship. No, we, we, the worship team, they are not leading you. You are leading you. The worship team, actually, if they didn't have to stand so their butts weren't facing you, they'd all be doing this. Because they're not doing this to you. And you're not doing this to them. We are worshiping the Lord. And so when the worship team comes in here, I expect them, and I hope you pray for them, to worship all through the week. This is not just a moment. This is the moments of their life. We are worshipers all week long. And then we come and we come with you. And you come with your worship and your heart and your ready engine. You've already been going before you got here. And then you come in and we worship. Not we, we. And I fully expect that the Lord is gonna reveal that to you more and more because church, we can't take you where you need to go. The Lord can. And we are lifting him up and we are praising his name. Amen. Amen. I pray you're encouraged and have an amazing week. Thank you so much for coming today.